Oh, okay, here we are. Hi. It's just me. I am most definitely at work on my break, and I've just been reflecting on a lot of things that have been happening with me lately. I thought it'd be interesting to make a video just to kind of chronicle the things I've been learning. Obviously, forgive the hot mess right now. Nobody's here, so I didn't really do anything. I don't know. Things have been kind of different. Um, I guess, I don't know. I was trying to go over this thought and I was trying to put it together of what's been happening in me. And I feel completely different than how I felt before. This isn't like a, oh, I wasn't saved and now I'm saved moment. But it's, it's one of those things where like, you never really rely on God as much as like, when you can see how small you are and how much you need him. And when you've been face to face with self-reliance and like hit yourself against the ground, like like face first against the ground, like that's literally what kind of happened where I for a really long time have been in this just state of like a fog. It was kind of weird. Um, the only way I can explain it is like, you know, I'd still be reading, I'd still be praying, I'd still be like, you know, going to church and and, and like being a, around brothers and sisters. But the one thing that would happen with me was I would realize that, actually I didn't even realize it. It was like I found this new state of normalcy, like this new state of normal that was not normal because I was so used to being not normal. I don't know if that makes sense. I was feeling like I was normal, but I wasn't normal because I had been in this abnormal state for like a year. And I knew when this thing kind of set in, it was kind of like this depression. I felt it happen, but when I was dealing with it, I didn't really do anything about it. It just kind of happened and I, I let it kind of like take its course because like when I was a kid and kind of went through like my own sort of weird depression-ish things, it just festered and it just sat there and I didn't do anything about it. I think that was the first mistake. When I didn't turn to the Lord, with everything I was going through, it kind of left me open to deal with it in a way that was not the most, I don't know, the best. And so what wound up happening with me was this weird state of depression started warping and the way that I dealt with it was I became vacant, completely vacant. And I could not even, I couldn't even realize this until I had a conversation with a friend on Wednesday, which I'll get to later. But what wound up happening with me was in my vacancy, I was living life. I was there. I was like, you know, with my friends, I was reading, I was praying. I was still like living life and like investing and doing everything like I thought that I should do, but I didn't feel right. And really what was happening was I was literally turned off. Like my brain was not really there. My soul was not really there. It was like I was just kind of living and getting by. And I think that's something that I kind of fell into doing once my dad had a stroke in 2010. I really struggled with going back and forth in that. And there's seasons where, you know, I know I'm happy. I'm joyous. Like there's, there's like, I, it's not something where it's like, oh, Brittany's depressed or something weird like that. But it was definitely something where like I wound up just kind of turning off. And I think that was the strangest thing that I've dealt with is like, I could be living my life, but I could just be fully turned off. And I was turned off. And I don't know. So that's what wound up happening. And in that vacancy, like I was just sort of figuring out instead of growing deeper in my walk in the Lord, when I read the Bible, I just read the Bible to read the Bible. And, and yes, I wanted to know more about him. Yes, I wanted to know more about his attributes, but they weren't really penetrating my heart and breaking me anymore. At least that's how it was in like the past few months. They were just sort of like, these are truths. Wow, what a great truth. Cool. And that was it. And so I guess like recently what wound up happening was... um I'll just catch you guys up. I was having a conversation with one of my really close friends. And this friend, like, doesn't even know how close of a friend they are to me. Like, I freaking love this person. <laughs> like, because I really do. And, like, I don't know. Like, it's cool because even in that, like, I found this encouragement. I just want to tell this person encouragement, too. I probably will. Like, next time I see them. But it's, like, that person was predestined for the work that they did already in my life and they have no idea that they've done such great work and like not that they've done great work but that the lord has cho chosen them and used them as a tool to do work in my life and like just by the wisdom that they share with me whenever they have wisdom 
or by like the ways they've provided for me. Like I've been provided for by this friend. They've like literally gone out of their way to see needs that I had in my life and like bless me with things. And over and over and over again, like, like literally I can think of like three prominent times right now where it's like, wow, you're, you're like literally the Lord used you to have like a huge handprint on my life right now. Like I would not be where I am at if the Lord would not have used you. And I think that that is so cool is that we, we don't really see the fruits of our labor when we try and study about the Lord. And when we're learning like how to love others, we don't really see the fruits of it. But like, and I don't even think that person right now can see the marks and the fruit of like the investment that they've had in just a friendship. But I don't know, just like, hopefully that's an encouragement is just to like live out your faith and and know that like, even in small ways, like the things that you think are just super small, because you're not going off and dying in another country and like giving your life for the gospel and like living off of like breadcrumbs and rice chips or whatever. It's like, just because you're not doing something that looks huge in this world doesn't mean you're not doing something. And so that was just an encouragement that I really need to go and contact that friend for and let, let them know. I was like, dude, you've totally like been used in my life as such a huge encouragement. And like, even in ways like in my brain, it's almost like as if they were like a guardian because there's ways in which like I was struggling and that person's just been like, Hey, you're stupid. And like, you know, not in a mean way, but in a way to just be like, Hey, like wake up. And like, and they've shared wisdom and, and communicated and communicated it in such a way that was very straightforward. It was not sparing my feelings as to flatter me, but it was like cut straight to the heart in a way of like, I'm going to cut you as my friend. And it, it, you know, I think I like in that way, it's like, it's so beneficial because it wasn't for anything else, but to like grow me as a person. And so it was like selfless. It's so cool. I don't know. I'm hanging, I'm hanging up on that for a lot, but, or getting hung up on that a lot, a lot of time on that. Words are hard. Anyways. Um, no, like, so back to what's been going on. I realized having a conversation with this person, um, at our small group, you know, like we were talking about something theological, something that was in my brain and in my studies and in the time that I've spent in the word, quite simplistic. The answer was right there. I knew it. It was at the front of my brain. But as I was talking with the person, it was as if literally my eyes were glazed over and white and I was just there listening and didn't, and like, you know, pretend like it was like I was back here and this avatar of myself, whatever it is, was up here with the person having the conversation. And it was so ridiculous because I knew the answer to the question. I knew how to like, you know, be like, yeah, scripture here, it says this scripture there, it says that. So therefore, like, obviously the answer to that question would be this. And like, this would be the beginning of the reason why that became an issue of thought is because like, you know, in the beginning there, you know, it's this like assumption that this equated to this. And it was like, I would be able to like take that apart super fast, super easy with what the Lord has grown me in. And it's not anything of self-glorification as much as it is the Lord letting me walk down paths to be able to see that and be able to share it. But I've just been so vacant and like listening to or like having this conversation with this person and walking through like us trying to figure out the answer to this question throughout the night. I knew the answer and it was given later. And even when it was given, I was still vacant about it. I was just like, yeah, wow, that's so cool. And then even later after that, it was like, I went home and I got in my car and I was like, what just happened? And it was like the Lord used that conversation with that person just because they like, you know, selflessly gave me friendship and then, you know, shared a thought that they had. I was blown away. The Lord like opened my eyes to that, um, that I was just being vacant. I was not there. And I was learning what it meant to be, I'm going to get a little bit intricate into my life for a little bit. This video is going to go over 10 minutes. Um, I was kind of, sorry, my neck. I was really studying what it meant to be a part of the culture I was in and not necessarily, sorry, my face on this phone is really distracting. So if I look down and up, that's the reason why it's like, I'm looking down there just to be like, what are you doing? Like my hand's really distracting. I was studying what it meant to be a wife. I was studying what it meant to be a woman. I was studying all these things that are good. They're great. But I know that the Lord had me studying things that were 
different before I started that. And I just fell into doing that because that's what everybody else around me was doing. So I kind of checked out. I said, you know what? I'm going to learn how to cook. I'm going to learn how to clean. I'm going to learn how to, you know, serve, which is, mind you, I learned some amazing stuff in the midst of this season. I learned like what it meant to be selfless and humble and meek, I think is the biggest thing. And like what it truly meant to be meek. Um, and not just like this, this, uh, emotion of meekness of like, you know, or this not emotion, um, way of living where it's like, I'm going to be quiet and like, you know, just have the persona of meekness, but what it truly meant to be meek and like having knowledge and having like the answers and having things like that. But, you know, in humility, like, it's like kind of putting back what you have to like let others go forward and like, you know, just for, I don't know. I won't get all into that because that's another video. But um, I don't know. I realized that in this season I was living and I was just kind of like living and I was learning things that didn't pertain to my life and godliness. It just pertained, pertained to like me being a woman and like growing more in that and like making myself more attractive and marketable to get married. Be and ah, that's a whole nother video. I won't even get into that, but just realizing that that's what I was doing and I wasn't growing myself in growing closer to Christ, but just kind of growing in the culture I was in, like what I th felt like I should be doing at the time because I'm like, tw in two weeks I'll be 29 and like, I just felt like, oh, this is what you should be doing right now because you're getting old. And everybody's telling me, oh, you're getting old. 30's like, oh, you're going to wind up in the grave. And it's like, you know, I don't know. It's It was interesting to walk down that road. But I realized I was being vacant, woke up from that, and then also realized not only that, but from a woman's breakfast, I was so obsessed with self. And that obsession with self happened because I was vacant. And because I was not on guard, I was not on the offensive, I was not seeking the Lord and abiding in him each and every day and each and every moment, like, because of that, like, that's why I became obsessed with myself. And that's why, like, all these sins crept in. Like, it was, okay, so this is what happened. Like, not only was I, like, vacant and I wasn't there and I wasn't, like, actually fighting and I wasn't actually, like, pouring myself into what I should be pouring myself into, but, like, I was open for my mind to be a playground, literally. Like whatever thought snuck in, it took me. And I wouldn't necessarily like react with it, but I would become an extremely inconsistent person in my personality because I was thinking these thoughts on the inside that made me like react to certain people at certain times for no reason. Like I was rude at times. I was like bitter. I was like judgmental like nobody's business and it's like it's weird because you like get little hints of that in other people and things that like you should rebuke or you should be like hey we shouldn't be saying that but like those little tiny bits of pieces of things that I would get in other people would just validate my judgment and like it would spread into like a totally different animal up here that nobody could see and I would omit sins I would not go to war against things that would come into my head and I don't know, it was just really weird being in this state where literally whatever Satan just wanted to drop in there, like it stayed. And I was not warring with sin. I was not brushing these things away, but they were like, you know, two schools ago, we had this <clears throat> example that was given by like a really godly man of like, you know, what it meant to you just let sin linger and let sin stay. And I think that's what happened in my brain is like, there's like this nest that was being built in my brain and birds were coming and landing and I was not brushing it off, but they had built like a whole entire freaking tree that was like growing out of my skull and like they were living there and it was ridiculous. And so I don't know. I'd like, I'm just realizing that like, wow, I have not been here. I have not been, it feels like I haven't been alive. I've been vacant for a really long time and just existing. But not only that, I think I've really learned what it means to like rely on the Lord. Cause the moment that I realized that it was like repentance immediately. But not only that, it's like you're left in such a weak state that you're just like praying literally in every instance, Lord, help me out. And like the Lord used another girl that I would like, you know, was in a group with at women's breakfast. 
And she like gave some really, really good wisdom that stuck with me. And it was stuff that her mom has told her. And what she wound up saying was like, you know, hey, like when you get a bad thought, just pray right away. And that I think is literally practicing the presence of the Lord and stuff that I knew, but stuff that like I wasn't actively doing. I would maybe try once or like say I was doing and thinking I was doing, but I wasn't actually doing it. And ever since then, like ever since that Saturday, I've been like praying like at every instance, every turn, because I know how weak I am. I know how quick and hard I can fall and it sucks. And like, I don't know, just been thinking through that, just been really going through it and like, I, I'm just in the state where I feel alive. I'm in the state where I feel new and I feel like the me that I haven't been in a really long time. And it's a scary place to be, but it's the best place to be because like in this state, like you're fully awake, but you have no strength of your own. We can do nothing apart from the Lord. And I mean, like literally every three steps is like, Lord, stop this thought. Please protect my mind. In this moment, when I'm talking with these people, keep me soft. In this moment, don't let me judge. I was watching a Hillsong worship video and I looked at somebody in the back doing something like weird while you know, like, like they're doing one of these numbers where they were like raising their hands, but they kind of like stopped and were like, and I like was judging and I like felt the thought of judgment come up of like, dude, I wonder if like they're even really like, you know, and it's like, you don't know what was happening. You don't know this person's life. Like, <coughs> excuse me, like this person could have just been really tired or like thinking or like maybe like a thought about the Lord hit them or something like that. Like you don't know their life. And it's so weird where I'm just like, Lord, help me, help me, help me literally at every turn. But I've never felt more awake and more alive and more joyous and more like juice. And I don't know, we had a New Year's party, like one of the final thoughts I have. And like at this New Year's party, I was running games and I was the one that was supposed to go there and just kind of like, you know, be like, okay, we're playing this. Okay, we're playing that. And it's going to be fun and it's going to be exciting. But long story short, what wound up happening with me was when I ran this game or when I ran the games of the night, it's the first time that I felt like I was back to normal in a really long time. Like I was walking through and I was, there, were a lot, there was a line of girls and a line of guys and we were playing telephone and I had spent all day and like just the time like before, like, cause that Saturday was when we had the women's breakfast that really opened my eyes and like I repented and I'd spent all the time, like, you know, praying to the Lord, like to protect me and my thoughts. And by the time we got there, I was like, having this communion with the Lord, like I was truly me walking down the line. I remember clear as day, Ivan was in there, it was me. And just feeling like there wasn't anyone in the room. And it was just like me and the Lord and I was laughing and I was joyous and I just felt free. And it was amazing. And it was like that moment, like, you know, it's like that moment from like those romantic movies where like, you know, the man looks at the woman and like all the music kind of like goes slow and it's like it's like that little like slow motion like tinder moment where like you know you could see the dust particles and the lights are all golden and cute and you know it's just got this girl who's sitting there and she's like laughing and she's turning around and she like you know is just enjoying herself and she's just free and then there's someone just looking at her like in love with her and you know taking her in at that moment that's really how I remember that moment, as weird as that sounds in my brain, because I was free to be myself before the Lord. I was not adulterated by sin or judgments or all these voices in my head. And I know we've talked about that many times, me and the girls, of what, it, what it's like to have voices in your head telling you things. And I didn't have that. It was just me and the Lord in this room, and he was the one I showed up to that party with, and it was awesome. So, I don't know. I leave that to say, I just found encouragement in, I don't know, all of it. Just, if you're 
feeling weird, if you feel like you're in a state where it's like, I'm here and things are fine, I'm reading and praying, but something's not right, and you've been in that state for a really long time, ask the Lord to reveal it to you. He's faithful to, you know, follow through on his promises. He will, he will help you through that. He will send you messengers like friends who don't even know that they're like such a big tool being used by the Lord to open your eyes to things you've never seen or things that like you just forgot. And I think that's a lot of this is like, you know, falling back on the wisdom that I used to have and I used to use so much and then feeling like, oh, because I am so wise or because I have all these things that I've been so good at for so long in my walk, like I'm not going to fall. But the reality is we need to be reminded every day. We're like stupid sheep that wander in the bushes and we get caught. And so, I don't know, just continue being encouraged by that um, and don't rely on yourself. You have to rely on the Lord. You have to rely on the Lord, like in every moment. Don't think that you're stronger than Jesus who had stole away to be with the Lord and to pray with him and to have his moments where he was pouring out. Like he literally was God in human flesh, was like doing so many miracles. He had such strength to him. And yes, he yielded that when he was in flesh, but like he in nature was God. And he still stole away to be with the Lord. He still prayed for long hours on end. Do not think you are stronger than him. You need to be praying and asking for the Lord's strength at every turn and every moment. And like, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Just focus yourself on the Lord. Focus yourself on him. Like, don't think that you're strong in him and don't be discouraged even, I guess, in the sake of my friend, if you feel like you're pouring out or you don't have a place of ministry or whatever, just live your life out and you never know how you can encourage someone. Um, don't fall into being, being vacant. Let your mind be on guard because the moment that your mind is not on guard and you are not abiding like that and you're not asking the Lord at every turn to help you and to guide you. Dude, like, we can't see certain sins. That was completely invisible to me. We, I, I, there's no way I could have known that I was in that. Just, you have to stay on guard, because if you're not on guard, and if you're not abiding, and if you're not on the offense, you're going to get dragged away. That's just the way that this world works, and that's the way that this war works. The battle, the war has already been won, but we're still in the midst of battles, and we need to remember that, and we need to rely on the Lord constantly, or else we're just going to get dragged away. So, I don't know. This is just, like, where I've been, and I hope that can be an encouragement for you guys. And I don't know. Anyways, I'll leave this video at like 23 minutes. So if you have anything to say, leave a comment, like, whatever, do all that YouTube stuff. But I'll talk to you guys later.